history of this local church, that has been the pattern. Um, in the past, there have been 10 people called from this church to be pastors and missionaries and being sent out to serve. But every one of us is sent to serve, um, according to the scripture that we're going to be looking at this morning. But there are two characteristics I want to share with you that are um, represented in a sending church. The first one is that it consistently demonstrates Christ's love in its community. The word consistently means either it's counted on or it's on purpose, um, it's ongoing, it, it just kind of naturally happens out of that church. And so it's, it's something that we continuously do as a body of Christ. The word demonstrates is a verb, and that's an action. And so it's something that we consistently do. It's something that we do on purpose. We don't, it's not haphazard. It's something that we are always engaged in. Um, the second characteristic is it has a discipleship foundation. And that's what we're, we've begun laying in the last probably year and a half to two years is a strong strengthening our discipleship because when Jesus used that model, then he sent the disciples out. So he had to teach them what they were sent to do. And we're in the same situation today. We have to be taught what we are to do. And uh, that's a called church or, I mean, a sent ascending church and so what where have we consistently demonstrated um, Christ's love in our community first of all in the in the past it was through teen works with the teens at the school or preteens maybe at the uh, the middle school um, having them on a Thursday night here I've heard numerous people in the community say I used to go to that church and I'd say, oh, when did you go? Or what, did, what were you involved in? Caravan and the teen night. Those were the top two. Or VBS. And so we have far-reaching results in the broader community of Hawthorne, New Bethlehem, Mayport, Salem, all those smaller communities around because of what we did here locally um, in a consistent way. Others have said, well, when so-and-so was sick, the church carried in meals to me. Do you know what it does when a pastor hears those kinds of things? It makes me happy. Because we consistently are doing those things still. And I can tell you, it's not me who's carrying in the meals. It's you all who are doing that. It's you who are involved in the caravans and teen night and being there for people. But we've served also at the fire hall a little over a year ago um, in a, a meal, serving a meal to the community on behalf of Janet and Heidi Bish. Um, we are, were involved in the school, uh, giving appreciation and letting the teachers know how much we value what they do in the classroom. I had a conversation yesterday uh, with a friend in Florida who attends a Nazarene church down there, and she asked me if I knew this teacher. She asked me if I would talk to the teacher about some strategies and things they could do in the classroom, and I said, sure, I'd love to. And then I said, well, what school do they teach at? It's the same school where I was, and I know who it is. But here's what really helped me like, be happy for what's happening there. That church, that Nazarene church in Florida, has adopted that teacher's classroom and has called her, as a teacher, a missionary, their missionary, into the inner city school. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. That is a sending church. 
That illustrates what the church is supposed to be doing around the world. And not just the church of the Nazarene. If every church, this is what uh, the pastor's group I was part of in Florida, because the Florida, uh, in that area of, Bay, of Bradenton, they, many of the churches adopted a school and they would give uh, themselves to that school. And so there was this group of churches and the pastors got together and one pastor said, if every church in this city would adopt one school, we would completely have the school district covered. And I said, wow, amazing, isn't it? That's ascending, an example of a sent church and a sent people. And it's not just happening. We don't have to just be at a school. That's just one example of a place where we serve. Um, we serve the trunk or treat. Next week, we're getting ready to serve and recognize the volunteer firemen and women who are here in Hawthorne. You see, we have many examples of being that sent church, but we're not finished yet. We have to continue the good work that God has put in and placed on our hearts and in our lives and in us as a congregation and continue to do that in our community as a sent people. And so in, in Romans chapter 10, verses 14 and 15, this is what Paul said. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This morning in Sunday school, Peggy said that some of the uh, part of what Paul was teaching on the spiritual gifts is some are called to be pastors and I agree with that she said but some are called to preach and and have to be instructed but you are called to preach you just don't know it yet you're called to preach a message to the people that you know because you're preaching that message whether you open your mouth or not. Do you know you're preaching a message when people see the attitude that you have? You're preaching a message when people know or hear for the first time about Jesus through your mouth? You're preaching a message to people that I may never ever see. He's using you to preach his message to others. And that's why discipleship is important. Jesus intentionally poured into his 12 disciples so that they would then be sent out to teach and to preach, to heal, to help encourage and raise up. You see, Jesus, he could have been everywhere, but he chose to train a small group of people and send them out as an example for what we now today are called to do. And so over in Luke chapter 10, we see this story of where, what Jesus is doing. And in Luke chapter 10, he gives these words to 72 others. That's what he, that he's got them gathered around him, just Get the picture in your mind. The 12 are with those. And so how many is that? 84. I can do that quick math. So there are 84 people gathered around Jesus. And he said to them, I'm appointing 72 others and sending them out two by two ahead of me to every town and place where I'm about to go. He told them this. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. 
Do you know what wolves do to lambs? They chew them up. They don't like them. And lambs are not, they, ha they don't really have a way to defend themselves. We are the lambs who are going out. Lambs are peaceful animals, for the most part. Lambs, they, they, they need to, to have a protector around them. Jesus is the great shepherd who protects the lambs, you and I, to go out among the wolves. Remember, Satan is a wolf who has put on sheep's clothing. He's disguised himself in that way. And so what do we do? As the lambs of God, we put on the clothing of God to go out into the world where the wolves are and to preach and to teach and to share. Because preaching is nothing more than sharing the word of God with somebody else. So yes, you are called to preach. You just didn't know it till now. Some of you do it just naturally. You're always sharing Jesus with somebody. With words, actually. Maybe you can't get up in front of people like this, but you're doing it one person at a time. He doesn't specify here that these, these 72 who are being sent out have to get in front of a big crowd. They're going two by two out into the world to just be relational with people and help people understand who Jesus is. Here were the instructions he gave them. He told them to go and to heal, to take care of people. He said, when you enter the house, say that peace be with you. So he wants them to go in peace. And in verse 17, we find this. When they returned, look how they came back. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. And so in the name of Jesus, now they realized they weren't really about the wolves. It was about them being the lamb to carry peace into every home where they went. Verses 23 and 24 says, He turned privately to his disciples and said, quietly to them, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. And so what they wanted to see was Jesus. The prophets prophesied about the coming Christ. They said, he's going to come. He's going to reign. He's going to be here in presence, in body. He's coming. Every, all the Old Testament points to Jesus is coming. It's coming near. It's coming near. Hundreds of years before Jesus actually came and was born. Can you imagine just looking forward and looking forward? That's what we're doing right now, isn't it? We're looking forward to the second coming. We can't wait till it happens. We're looking forward to it. But we have a responsibility before that to go and tell. To make sure that other people know that Jesus loves them. And he wants them to know what we know. That he too can be their savior if they will accept. And so how do we keep the culture of that sent church or that sending church? Here's some things that we do. First of all, we need to pray. Diligently pray and ask God to encourage those who are called and to call more. 
Daily we need to be praying for this. We need to be praying that we will be obedient to the call wherever we go, to whomever we speak, that God will, will open His Word, open our mouths and the Word in our minds to give them. And then we need to be discipling. Those of you who've been through some of the deep, intense discipleship work that we've done over the last year and a half, it's your turn. It's your turn to disciple more people. It's your turn to mentor, to train, to bring in and involve those who are coming into the church body of Christ and to help them integrate and assimilate in the church and then be used in ministry. We're called to do this and we must do it. This is the multiplication process of, the, of what Jesus was trying to teach his disciples. It's not just about you 12, in other words, when he gathered them with the 72. But I'm going to be sending more. I'm going to be sending more. And you're going to be sending more. And we see the multiplication done in the book of Acts. And so we need to be discipling. We need to continue that. And we need you, as you gather more people around you who are maybe new believers, maybe they're not even yet believers. It's our responsibility to teach and to train them in what you know and how to become a believer. And then we support financially those who are sent. We, we send money every month to missions. We sent money um, to the hurricane victims. We sent money to, the, um, to support world evangelism. That's what we call our funds in the Church of the Nazarene. We collected alabaster money and sent that off to be, be able to build schools and churches and rebuild some of the places where hurricane damage was done or maybe where the fires are, are out west. Some of our Nazarene churches have been affected by that. We also send crisis care kits. That's part of being sent, a sending church, is when we put those kits together, they go out. And people who have been affected by the two major hurricanes this uh, fall, they have been sent to them. And so we are a sending church financially. We support what's going on around the world through our giving. We keep uh, missions, local missions, which is what we do as outreach here in our community, and global missions, forefront in our minds. We need to be, I think, working a little bit more harder in, in our district missions and giving, especially in Pittsburgh, I'm also going to be meeting with some pastors about uh, there's some work that needs to be done in Sharon, Pennsylvania with uh, human trafficking. It's a, a deep need there. And so we need to find out what we need to do to help them there in that, those causes. I just read uh, yesterday one of my friends from North Carolina, her... Uh, church was reaching out and some people who were caught in the human trafficking I don't know if they call it an industry but that's basically what it is um, and three young women were rescued as a result of that and one lady said she could not believe that it was just across the street from where she works can you imagine in your own backyard that people are being trafficked and taken, young women, young, young men. It's terrible what's happening. But as a sen sending church, and as a church that's sent both, we need to be involved in the missions that are not just here and right here in our local community, but we need to begin to broaden that and look a little bit further at what we can do. And then 
We continue the legacy, which we have, I believe, in this church. Continuing the legacy of being ascending church. We need to raise up people who are called and sent into the world to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. I think about Zach often and pray for him daily as God uses him where he is. It's, not, it's, a, it's probably the least likely place, but yet it's a place where many people need to hear the hope of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all were too quiet today. I had to wake you up. But it's our responsibility to encourage, to help others catch the vision and the message and take it further. Are you in? Taking the gospel message. We have people here in all walks of life doing all kinds of jobs um, transportation, you know, transporting goods and, and people, um, people who work in hospitals, schools, all kinds of places, with people who have special needs. We have, each of us has a mission. We all have a calling. We have something that we can do using the giftedness that God has given us it's not just used in the body in here, in the church. It's used out there too, in the community, wherever we go. We have a word of hope. Do you believe that? Amen. If you don't have a word of hope to give to someone else this morning, see me after the service, because I'll give you a word of hope that you can share. There's no lack of a word of hope in this book. So we'll find one somewhere that you can share with somebody else because it's there. We have to put it in our hearts, in our minds, and then we'll have a ready word. Peter says to be ready to give a word of hope, give a word of encouragement at any time. And that hope is in Christ Jesus. My dad used to tell us when we were growing up, be ready to preach, pray, or die. And he meant it. And we've never forgotten it. And we're ready to preach, to give that word of hope to someone, to encourage someone, to help bring peace to their lives, the peace that God gives us. We're ready to pray with them, and I'm ready to die at any time he calls me home because I know where I'm going. I have that assurance of knowing that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and that when I die, I know where I'll go. When I get to heaven, what rejoicing, we sang that this morning, there will be because I'll be home, my permanent home. And I won't have to worry about construction in my permanent home. Right, Ken? Yeah. None of us will. Um, so, let's get ready to go. We're going to close in prayer. Let's stand this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we have a legacy in this church right here of being ascending church. Lord, I pray that you would continue that strong legacy that has already been in the hearts and minds of those who've gone before us. That we would be faithful to the end to continue that good work that you have already started. Lord, I pray also that you would encourage us and strengthen us with your word that as we go forth and proclaim your word to others, that they would hear and know that they can trust and have a relationship in you just like we do. Lord, help us to find someone this week, put someone in our path that we can bring a word of encouragement to, a word of hope, and that they would too 
be blessed by what you can do in and through us for them. And we will give you all the praise and glory. In your name we pray. Amen.